BBC Radio Tease. Uh, and it seems like it sometimes, because if we, we don't champion ourselves, then you just get the sense that no one outside Teesside County, Durham and North Yorkshire will do it. So we've got to do it together. We've got, to, we've got to promote what you're doing together. The things you're doing that are fantastic. Let us shout about it, because you will influence, maybe guides, or give a little bit of inspiration to somebody else about what you're doing. And I think this, I think this sums it up perfectly. There's a new community cafe, and it's launched today. It's in Middlesbrough, and it's based at Easterside, and it runs a pay-as-much-as-you-can-afford system, which is so, so clever, and is just a really nice thing to do. Now, Ellie Edgigan is one of the people behind it, and I spoke to her earlier this morning about how it got set up, and what they do. We started up just over a year ago now. A bunch of us that live on this estate and a friend started a company called Health Village. And the whole concept was to improve people's physical, spiritual, relational and emotional health. And we wanted to find different ways that we could do that. And when we began, we just began doing a Friday after school thing. We did walking groups, we did exercise groups, but we were running from other people's spaces. We didn't have a space that was our own that we could use whenever we wanted. And then what was the Daisy Bakery became available for us on the estate, which is a perfect location. It's right in the middle of the estate by the shop. And it's something we'd always dreamed of doing, but didn't think we'd be doing it this quickly. <laughs> um, but just couldn't turn down the opportunity. We just thought it's there. We've got to go for it. So we got the keys in August and then I had a baby a week later. <laughs> and then... Um, we just sort of gradually worked our way at getting it up and ready to let people in. We had different volunteers come and help us out and getting it ready. We had a breakfast where all the volunteers came together and we talked about what we'd be running and set out with just Friday mornings and Tuesday evenings as a sort of test the waters and realistically the hours that we could do being parents and running on volunteers. That's where we started from. Wow, you've had a busy eight, eight months in Ellie, haven't you? <laughs> A bit of a pity, yeah. The, the, the approach that you, you bring to any sort of well being, it's a 360 that you need. It's not one thing that can solve or go to help towards making somebody feel better about themselves. You, you know, you're a clinician, but also you're yeah. a human being as well. Is, is this the big part of it? Is not one thing will solve one thing? Yeah, completely. So I think that, to be honest, to make any change in the first place, you've got to have a relationship with people and you've got to have community together because making a change on your own is nigh on impossible and most people will attest to the fact that any resolutions you make are much easier when you make them with someone else. So the cafe gives us a central base to build that community and get to know people and gives us a safe place for people to come and gather in together. Is it like a Newton's cradle where one thing will set off another thing, like a chain reaction of, you know, one person will come on with an issue, but they'll meet someone else and they'll create friendships, and it, it, it just sort of all sparks from there. It seems ever so simplistic. Why don't we do more of this, Ellie? That's a very good question. We're hoping that this will sort of spark a movement that a few other people might get on board with, and that, yeah, this, this kind of model can grow and, and be replicated other places. Is it difficult to sort of get people on board with this? You know, when you're going around banging the drum, amongst the other things that you're doing, you know, I don't know when you ever sleep, Ellie, to be honest with you. But, you know, to get people on board, has it been easy to get that, that level of support that you've got? Yeah, I think we are really fortunate. The estate that we live in, there is already a great community feel on this estate and there are some incredible people that live on the estate. And it is through, I think, living where we do it, it's a lot trickier if you're going into somewhere different to try and, and do what you do. Whereas when you live there and you see these people all the time and you bump into each other at the shop, so it's more than just a volunteering role or volunteering job. It's well, relationship. It is. It's the community, isn't it? And it, I, I, forgive me if this sounds trite, but it sounds as if you could sort of franchise this like a McDonald's or a Starbucks in, in the states, where you get individuals who have the, the, the you know the, the the verve like you have to go in and start something like this, and you could give them that peer support. Yeah, yeah, we would love to see this grow and be replicated. Like I say, the whole idea of the way we've done it is to make it something that other people can see. This is this is doable, and it, and it is replicable. I'm just the average person, so I've not got any super skills or any ex exceptional training. It's just getting stuck in and doing it. But you care. And, that's, yeah. and that, 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 that comes through in bucket loads, Ellie. When I'm, you know, the five minutes we've been speaking, you care and you're passionate. And 
you know, if you were to put a price on that, it'd be ten million pounds, or, or <laughs> you know, or whatever. So how will the how will it work? So anybody coming to the cafe is the is it a, a pay as you go scheme? Is it a pay what you can afford? Is it pop in and do whatever yeah. you can do? So for the cafe for, for the business ones, it's definitely the drinks are separate as the cost, mostly because the drinks are our our main cost. Mm. Um, but then the food is all pay what you feel. It's totally anonymized. So there's the option of either paying with your card and you enter the amount anonymously and, and pay by card, or you just put money into an envelope which you're given when you take the order, and it just goes into a box and nobody knows at all what people are paying. It's totally what people can afford, what people feel that the, the food is worth for them. That's amazing. And, and, and am I right in thinking you, you, you're putting on like cooking sessions and sort of life skill sessions as well? Yes, that's our hope. We have run in the past alongside Middlesbrough Environment. They've run some cooking courses previously that was over in the hub, but now that we've got this space, we're really hoping that we can open it more for, like you say, cooking classes, homework clubs, games nights, you name it. If there's someone that wants to do it, we're happy to use the space for it. I'd love to pop down sometime. Would that be possible to come down and spend the evening with you to see what you do for BBC Radio Tees? Yeah, Tees? definitely. Tuesday evenings are a really good evening in here. It's lots of families, lots of kids, food, games. Perfect. Absolutely. But give us the details again. When when are you open? Where is it at? And, and how can people access what you do, Ellie? So we're open every Monday, Wednesday and Friday between 9 and 1. And that's doing breakfast food. And then on a Tuesday evening, we open from four till half six, and that's for a dinner. It's different every week, so you just have to keep an eye on the social media for what's on the menu on that day. And, and how can people come to you? Do they have to book in, or can they just pop through the door? No, everyone's just walking and just coming whenever. They can book in if they want to be certain of a table. Um, it can get quite busy at times, but there's usually we can find space for people. And how can we find you? Where are you at? So we're just next to Sainsbury's on Easter Side Shop at Dumbarton Avenue. I think what you do is brilliant. And I come in to work, here we are Monday morning, and I'm feeling a bit woo, woo, woo. And just speak to you for five minutes, Ellie, you've lifted my soul for what you're yeah. doing for the community. So thank you for all you're doing. And I hope there's people listening, either in Peter Lee, Barnard, Castle, Richmond, Whitby, whatever, and go, we fancy having a go at that. Definitely, we'd love to see it. We took a lot of inspiration, um, and we just have to mention that to Refuse Cafe in Chesterley Street, who have a similar model of pay as you feel. They gave us a lot of advice, a lot of inspiration, so if you're looking for another place to pop to there. Fantastic. Well, look, uh, let's let's keep in touch, and I'd love to pop down and come and see what you do first hand, if that's all right. Yeah, that would be wonderful. We'd look forward to it. Excellent stuff. Have a lovely day, and thanks for speaking to us this morning. And you, take care now. And yourself, Ali. Bye-bye. Bye. Kind people doing kind things. And it, it, I think because Ellie and her family and her friends who set this up are based in the community, they care are, are that bit more. There's that sort of extra bit because it's not sort of just franchising out. It's the community coming together. And you, I see it in so many places, you know, Trimland Grange, Trimland Village, in the village all there. Um, in Spennymoor, there's loads of stuff going on. And it's just wonderful creating those networks to bring communities together. And you... If you're doing something, you, say, well, you never talk about us, let us know, please, 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 so we can shout about you and you can explain to people and get the message out there. Because there'll be somebody listening who'll go, I, I didn't know about this.